here it is energy is spontaneously spontaneously means on its own without any external assistance energy is spontaneously tend to flow only from concentrated in one place to becoming diffused or dispersed or spread out if we consider the last two cases that we have seen the first process in which ice melts when ice melts then the energy uh, is being uh, uh, the energy from the environment is given to the ice so that this ice melts and forms water and that water have a greater volume and that water spreads out on the floor in the other case that we have seen in a cup of coffee when this coffee is hot this coffee releases some energy eventually and gradually and it becomes cold now the energy from this coffee has been given out into the surrounding so that this coffee comes down to room temperature now in this case what's happening is the energy because it's hot it has some thermal energy that energy was contained into the coffee in the liquid that energy is gradually given out where that energy goes that energy goes into the surrounding so the surrounding which has air molecules that gains that energy and the kinetic energy of the molecules is increased by that uh, thermal energy which was contained in the coffee so the energy what was, which was contained in this amount of volume eventually when it releases heat goes and spreads up into millions and billions of molecules around the atmosphere this is diffusion of energy when this ice cube melts the the energy which was contained into the air outside the thermal energy that has been poured into this ice cube and this ice cube which was having little amount of energy suppose you if you considers a atmosphere around this now this atmosphere is having some energy now this volume which is contained in the atmosphere is not having sufficient energy so this the whole energy of the air outside is diffused and so that this water molecule melts so that there is no amount contained within the atmosphere which is low on energy energy flows from outside to cover this space which is having less energy so that this when it melts then that volume is also having some energy so effectively if you consider this volume of atmosphere then the energy has been diffused from this amount to cover up this volume of ice as well in both the cases if you observe then the energy has been diffused into more volume now let's consider more examples that will convince ourselves that in any process that is spontaneous then the energy diffuses it spreads out for example when you you know if you have studied electrostatics you will remember that if you if you keep a charge on a sphere metallic sphere like this then the charge spreads out the electrostatic energy which was contained in a certain surface area of sphere that spreads out so that the entire surface you know has equal amount of electrostatic energy now this spreading out is another example that when you have energy concentrated at some place and if you allow it to spread out it does spread out reverse of this will not be possible when you have a spreaded out energy that energy do not go and concentrate on a small volume that reverse is never possible in spontaneous process that reverse is of course possible but it is not spontaneous that means it will not happen on its own the other way around is a spontaneous if you have a charge accumulated concentrated somewhere that will spread out if you have a battery and the chemical energy in this is contained in the volume of the battery when you complete the circuit and when you add a resistance like this then that energy starts to flow quickly that energy is no more contained within the battery that energy wants to come out and it's disper and that energy is dissipated in this resistor and that heat energy goes into atmosphere that increases the energy of millions and trillions of molecules of air of various gases in the atmosphere 
So the energy that was contained in this battery is not diffused into the whole of atmosphere. This is diffusion of energy and this will be spontaneous. You just have to complete the circuit. So there is a tendency of this energy to disperse, to dissipate, to spread out, to diffuse. So this is an important word here. Energy spontaneously tend to flow. If you allow it, if you help, if you, if you, if you make it possible for it to diffuse, if you construct a pathway for the diffusion, then the diffusion will happen automatically, spontaneously, without any external assistance. This we know. This we know from class 8th and even before. Similarly, suppose you have two chambers. There is a gas filled in one chamber and the other chamber is empty or there is a vacuum or there is a low pressure. When you knock this knob out, when you open the knob, then the gas which was contained in one chamber that is diffused in both the chambers. And the reason being, this will be spontaneous. If you open up the knob, then this air molecules which are contained in one of the chamber will diffuse into an entire atmosphere. It will try and cover up the whole of the atmosphere. Now this is spreading of energy. The energy was contained in this volume and the energy has not spread it up. So this is spontaneous. But the reverse will not be spontaneous. If the energy is spread out and now somehow the, all the gases will never come into one chamber or a small volume for that matter. Because the other way around is not spontaneous. A spreaded out system do not concentrate whole of its energy in a small volume. Be from these three examples, you, I mean, it should be convincing to you that the energy tries to spread out and that process in which energy spreads out, that is spontaneous. For example, when you speak, the sound wave closer to your mouth have high density. As they come out, then the sound wave density is decreased. And this is spreading out in the atmosphere. This is spontaneous. A wave that was having higher bundles of energy, the density was high, that spreads out. And the diff there's a diffusion of the wave and the intensity is gradually decreasing because the whole energy is becoming diffused, is, dis is, is dispersing throughout the atmosphere. This is spontaneous. We know this. It happens. Similarly, suppose if you have hill, then the river that flows, it flows down the hill. The river never climbs up the hill. Simil similarly, when you have boulders in this river, those boulders will come down along with the river to the plane. The boulders and rivers, they never climb up the plane. Reason being, when you have a boulder on the top of the cliff, cliff, then it has a tendency to decrease its energy and to disperse its energy. Because the boulder at the top of the hill is having some potential energy. When that boulder comes down, it hits other boulders and other smaller, smaller rocks and pedals during its course of coming down. And that Potential energy is transmitted into the form of kinetic energy to other smaller particles. Now it rubs the ground. Due to friction, some heat is lost. And that heat energy is transferred to the ground as it comes down. So the whole potential energy is transferred to in form of kinetic energy to other particles in the form of heat energy to the soil, to the ground, to the root, to the, to the grasses. During the course, it can, comes down. So the potential energy is now dispersed to various other matters and that heat energy is given to the ground. So the energy that was concentrated in form of potential energy that is being dispersed. Now it has a tendency, but it, it's not that the potential energy automatically will be dispersed, will be converted to other energies and the whole energy will be diffused out. If you give a chance to this boulder, it will come down and diffuse its energy. And that chance is required. So that's why it has a tendency of doing it. Now if you have a slope, if you have a plane that this do not have any chance of reducing its energy, suppose if a mountain is like this, now this do not have any chance, or this do not have any chance, so it has a tendency, but it will not be able to do it. But when you are keeping a boulder on a slope, then it has a tendency, now you have given it a chance and it will disperse and diffuse its energy. That's why energy spontaneously tend to diffuse. And here you have given it a chance, you have given it an opportunity and it will diffuse its energy. And that's what happens with water. When water comes down, the potential energy is dispersed. It hits other substances during due to friction, it heat up the ground and the energy that was contained in water is diffused 
to other particles. So this thing is a spontaneous. Now if the boulder has to go up, suppose in a hypothetical process this goes up. When it goes up, it requires some energy. It, and the whole energy is concentrated in that boulder. So heat has to be taken away from the ground. The other particles which is having slight vibration that has to be given to this boulder, they will stop vibrating. The whole energy of the environment, of the surrounding has to be given to this boulder and this concentrated energy will lay at rest with this boulder. Now that is opposite of diffusion. You are concentrating energy from all over the surrounding to one particle. So that's opposite. So that will not happen. So energy tends to diffuse. Such processes happens in which energy is diffused.